Hey, I'm disability attorney Nancy Cavey. I am uh, here on the Clackamas River in Oregon where I've had a, uh, a uh, meeting and confer, a meeting, if you will, on an uh, ERISA disability case. And I'm taking the day off. My husband is going to be fishing on the Clackamas uh, River because he's a fly fisherman. I'm not, so I'm doing what I love to do, and that's talking to you. When we have filed a complaint and an answer has been issued by the carrier and we've had a case management conference, then we get into discovery. Well, what's discovery? The discovery will take two forms. Basically, there is written discovery and then there are depositions. Written discovery will start out with something called interrogatories and will also involve a request for production. Interrogatories are lots of questions that are sent to um, the opposing counsel to try to get at information that forms the basis of the decision, who was involved, uh, what they relied on, um, how they got paid, and we're also trying to establish, depending on the circuit, that their decision was influenced by something called bias. There are two standards of review generally in an ERISA case. The standard of review can be de novo, which means that the judge can substitute their judgment for that of the disability carrier, or there is arbitrary and capricious. I think of arbitrary and capricious as a set of handcuffs on the judge because it's very hard to get the judge to overturn a wrongful decision unless we can show that the decision on the insurance company has been influenced by bias as a result of their dual role of, of, of uh, an entity that makes the decision on the one hand and then on the other hand pays the benefits out of their assets. Uh, and that uh, can be tough uh, to get in the discovery um, process, but that's why we start out with interrogatories. We also issue a set of requests to produce, and we're also, again, asking for production of documents that will get at the basis of the denial, uh, the standard of review, and how we can attack the decision as being uh, a violation of the arbitrary and capricious standard of review, or uh, ultimately uh, give the judge enough information under the de novo standard of review to see that the disability uh, carrier really wasn't acting as a fiduciary, uh, which means that they weren't acting in your best interest as, as a policy holder or a participant in a plan. There can be lots of fights about discovery, and many times there are motions that will be flying back and forth before the judge will clarify what it is we can do in terms of discovery. And that's important because I do like to take depositions. And primarily it's a 30B6 records deposition. A 30B6 deposition is in part uh, a, uh, a deposition where the carrier has to designate somebody to speak about particular issues in a case. They also have to bring the records and that's accompanied by a, a subpoena. Now, again, this can be the subject of a lot of fighting about uh, what we're entitled to. And again, depending on the circuit that, you, that we're in, uh, there is case law and orders that will, do, that will basically ex set the parameters, if you will, of the extent and nature of our uh, discovery. But what's also important about all of this is, is there's a time limit for conducting all of this uh, discovery because the next thing we have to do if the case doesn't uh, resolve at mediation uh, is to file what's called a motion for summary judgment. And I'll talk about that after we talk about the mediation process in an ERISA case.